Beneath the moon's cold, silvery stare, a twisted fairy weaves tales of despair. With frost-kissed wings, a haunting sight, nature's enchantress embraces the night. Welcome to Wary Tales, Icy Reckoning. In the picturesque town of Ashenbury, the once magical essence of Christmas had faded beneath the weight of greed and inflated egos, and the people were entangled in their own selfish pursuits. Instead of sharing warmth and joy during the festive season, they indulged in fierce competitions. In a bid to outshine each other with showy displays of wealth, they hosted extravagant parties, exchanged lavish gifts, and adorned their homes with gaudy decorations, all striving to outdo their neighbors. Acts of generosity were overshadowed by the relentless pursuit of material gain, and the charitable spirit of the holidays was eclipsed by the cold glow of greed. The people of the city, consumed by their own wants, had forsaken the less fortunate. The cupboards of once vibrant soup kitchens were empty, and the homeless shelter, deprived of its funding, stood as a bleak testament to the neglect. On Christmas, many found themselves without homes, their plight ignored amidst the opulence of those who had turned their backs on compassion. The government officials, entrusted with the well-being of the community, succumbed to corruption, accepting bribes, and betraying the public trust. Instead of serving the best interests of the people, they became puppets manipulated by greed, leaving the community's needs unmet. The once honorable seats of power now reeked of deceit, casting a shadow over the very foundations of governance. Unbeknownst to the community, their descent into selfishness had summoned Vareth, the Frost Reaver. As the clock struck midnight on Christmas night, a bone-chilling wind swept through the deserted streets, signaling the arrival of the icy demon. Vareth materialized from the frigid shadows, his frigid form casting an otherworldly glow upon the snow-laden town. Drawn by the gluttony permeating the town, Vareth glided ominously through the city, seeking those whose hearts had been tainted by greed. The selfish, asleep in their beds, remained oblivious to the impending doom. In the grand house of the town mayor, the Frost Reaver phased through the door with a ghostly quietness. The air inside was heavy with the scent of arrogance and the suffocating weight of ill-gotten wealth. Shadows played on the walls, dancing in eerie harmony with the flickering candlelight. Creeping through the opulent corridors, Vareth reached the mayor's bedroom, a chamber adorned with extravagance that spoke of deceit and egoism. The mayor lay in blissful ignorance, wrapped in silken sheets, his face marked by the shadows of materialism. Approaching with deliberate slowness, Vareth's ghostly form seemed to absorb the ambient light, casting an unnatural glow in the room. The floorboards creaked beneath his icy touch, adding a sinister rhythm to the silence, echoing the tension that hung in the air. As Vareth fixed his chilling gaze upon the slumbering mayor, the room seemed to darken. The sleeping man stirred, a subtle awareness of impending doom tugging at the edges of his dreams. The room grew colder with each passing moment, the air thickening with an ethereal frost. The mayor's eyes shot open, panic flashing across his face as he tried to scream, but only a muted gasp escaped his lips. Vareth, with a sinister smile, locked eyes with the man, and a profound chill permeated the room. The once grand chamber, now a stage for a morbid dance, witnessed the draining of the corrupt official's essence. In the hushed stillness, Vareth left behind a frozen husk, a stark testament to the consequences of unchecked selfishness. The room, once a sanctuary for deceit, now echoed with the haunting stillness of retribution, and the shadows lingered as witnesses to the chilling legacy of the frost demon. The sinister being selected another house 
materializing on their doorstep with an icy breath heralding impending doom. The family's materialistic pursuits acted like a beacon, guiding Vareth with an insatiable hunger for their empty souls. Creeping into rooms where inhabitants lay in blissful ignorance, the demon reveled in the tension it wrought. The air seemed to crystallize, growing colder with each chilling step. Shadows cast by the flickering Christmas lights danced upon the walls like eerie ghosts. The fading glow from the dying fireplace served as a foreboding symbol, foretelling the impending loss of their greedy souls. Approaching the first slumbering figure, the Frost Reaver's icy touch sent anticipatory shivers through the room. Light sounds of snoring echoed through the stillness, the sound amplifying the haunting sense of decay. The victim, ensnared in the unsettling clutches of a nightmare, stirred and was abruptly jolted awake. As Vareth locked eyes with the selfish man, his soul was drained like the mayor before. A dark joy gleamed in the Frost Reaver's eyes as it savored the feast. With deliberate action, it moved on to the next soul, replacing her warmth with an eerie hollowness. Each greedy member of the family was snuffed out like candles in a chilling wind, their insatiable desires leaving them cold and lifeless. A once festive household was lost to the icy clutches of the holiday demon. Only frigid shadows remained, a chilling reminder of the silent horror. With every step, Vareth left a chilling trail of frost, a frozen echo of his unyielding pursuit. The town, once adorned with festive lights, now flickered in an icy radiance as the demon's influence spread. As the Frost Reaver continued his work, the atmosphere grew colder, and the town became shrouded with deadly frost. The demon's chilly breath whispered through the night, drawn to dark hearts, turning greed into frozen manifestations of their own selfishness. In the desolation of the wintry night, the Frost Reaver prowled the snowy streets, drawn to a solitary figure of a man. It was the town sheriff, having just left his mistress at a clandestine hotel. The air grew heavy and still. An eerie frost clung to abandoned buildings like a spectral shroud. As the frost demon drew near, an icy chill enveloped the surroundings. The sheriff, lost in the quiet solitude of a darkened alley, sensed an otherworldly presence but remained oblivious to his sealed fate. Shadows seemed to lengthen, reaching out with haunting fingers as the Frost Reaver fixed its chilling gaze upon him. In a heartbeat, the man felt the temperature plummet, an unearthly cold gripping his very soul. A hushed gasp escaped his lips as the malevolent entity drained the essence of life from him, leaving behind a frozen shell in the forlorn alley. One by one, unsuspecting residents of the doomed town fell victim to Vareth. Their souls, frozen and fragile, were collected by the demon, encased in spectral ice. Ashenberry, once alive with the hustle of materialistic pursuits, now stood as a frozen testament to consequences of unchecked greed. As dawn broke the next morning, Vareth, laden with crystallized souls of the damned, vanished into icy winds. Now a desolate expanse of frozen regret, the town was littered with the remnants of bankrupt souls. It became a haunting reminder of the price paid for forsaking the true meaning of Christmas. A silent graveyard of retribution, the community bore witness to the chilling legacy of Vareth, the Frost Reaver, personified vengeance in every frost-laden step. As the demon retreated into the shadows, the once vibrant streets now echoed with haunting stillness. Frozen husks of departed, scattered like macabre ornaments, served as a chilling reminder of the town's collective descent into selfishness. The air, heavy with the weight of lost lives, whispered a mournful lament for spirits stolen by icy claws. 
Biting winds carried the anguished sighs of the lost souls through the wintry night, turning them into haunting melodies that intertwined with the enchanting chimes of distant Christmas bells. The spirit of the town seemed to fracture, as if a bitter cold had seeped into the very heart of its existence. The remaining townsfolk, unaware of the demonic retribution that had befallen their neighbors, continued their lives with callous disregard for the true spirit of Christmas. But the Frost Reaver's visitation was a direct consequence of their own greed. The icy demon, having retreated for the moment, could manifest again, seizing the souls of those who remained blind to the lessons found in their neighbors' misfortunes. Thank you so much for watching. This one was inspired by, um, there's that song that says, scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago, right? And I've always thought classic ghost story for Christmas is a Christmas carol, but there are other Christmas stories that are darker that have demonic presence like Krampus. And so I was thinking, what if there was a town where the people were so greedy and materialistic and selfish that the, the greed actually manifests into a demon who comes and takes their wicked souls? And so that was the inspiration and the idea and where this story came from. So I appreciate you being here and watching my first story of 2024. Happy New Year. Um, next week, I'm going to do my birthday story. My birthday is in this month and I've been working on a story for my birthday, something that represents me as a person. Um, it's maybe a little different than some of my normal stuff, but also similar because I really, 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 really love fantasy. And then the week after that, we're going to do a write with me video. I'm going to document the entire writing process from beginning to end. And then I will also show you the finished story. So walk you through how I write the outline, how I come up with the characters, how I structure the story, and then show you the story. And if you like that, <laughs> that's my cat. I'm so sorry. She's very feisty this morning. What morning isn't she feisty? Um, so that's what I have in store. So happy new year, birthday story next week, following week, we'll do a write with me story. And then I've got something for the end of the month. And then we'll see what February brings. I have a whole array of, um, dark fairy tales and some light, um, horror that I have in mind for February. I also have a really long murder mystery. It's like 30 minutes. Um, but it just takes forever to put something like that together. But we'll see. And if I can find the time, I'll, I'll give you the 30 minute murder mystery. It's called uh, Killer at the Carnival. So it's kind of fun. Um, it's more summer feeling though. I'm feeling the winter vibes, ice demons and ice witches and, you know, things like that. All right, <laughs> my cat's not going to let me record anything else. So as always, thank you for being here. If you liked this story, please like, share, subscribe, all of those things. And as always, I am super grateful for everyone who stayed this long and for the people who are being really supportive of my writing and my stories. I appreciate every single one of you.